Hello everyone, my name is Paula and for today's video we are talking all about Monstera Albos. We have been growing Monstera Albos here at our greenhouse for a few years now. I would say that we probably have one of the largest collections in the country. We propagate them ourselves. We also receive Albos internationally. We not only sell them at our nursery, at our garden center, but we also sell wholesale and online. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you check the description box below so you guys can get your hands on one of these albos. So since we've been growing these albos for years, I asked my sister if she could help out with this video, give you as much information as she can from growing these albos for years. Right now we have our albos set inside of our greenhouse. Our greenhouse space is east and west, so we have them all the way in the far east of our greenhouses so they get that morning sun. We also have some grow lights that could help with the variegation. There has been a lot of trial and error with these Monstera albos, and really that's just the best way for us to learn. And we're excited to show you guys everything that we've learned so far from albos and any information that you probably didn't really know. So let's go talk to my sister Melody and see what's up in that noggin of hers because I know she could definitely help with us. So let's go talk to my sister. So we've been collecting albos for about two years now and we were able to select the high variegation ones or really ones that we thought were really beautiful and we were able to set them aside and we have those now in eight inch pots and 10 inch pots. And so from there, we're able to take our cuttings and then pot them and then sell them to you guys. But we also still get them imported so then we can have them ready to go in like about two months and then we can ship it out to you too. We have our albos separated into three sections, low variegation, medium variegation, high variegation. With these, they have to have a moss pole or else the Monstera albo is going to tip over or also it's, it's not going to grow as beautiful big leaves because it doesn't feel supported. So it's always important when you have a Monstera that you have it already with a moss pole or something to have it climbing up or leaning against something so you can, can feel that structure and also feel like secure to also keep releasing leaves. What's great about the Monstera albos is that they love to be kind of like a little bit compact into their soil. Like they don't really necessarily need to be like repotted all the time. Obviously you can always tell when it needs to be repotted. But uh, most of the time, I think for us, we kind of keep them until they have to be repotted and then that's when we change it. But it's not something that you have to worry about, like I need to constantly be repotting it or something. Of course, with more variegation it has, the slower it's gonna grow. But with the right conditions, anything can happen. Our Monstera albos, we have them growing in our cocoa mix. That's cocoa, perlite, and I think we stopped using bark. So it's just mostly just a lot of cocoa and perlite. We're gonna show you our soil. We're gonna take a Monstera out, show the roots and show the soil in a little bit. But yes. we're just gonna have Melody finish up here. Because we're in a greenhouse, you know, the humidity stays inside. So with our cocoa mix with the albos, it's doing great because they are able to like get that water weekly and able to drain out well and then keep what they want. With the mix, that's what works with us on in our greenhouse. Uh, maybe with others it can do they can do something else, but with us the cocoa mix is the best and that's where we get the widest roots ever. Healthy, healthy, healthy. So we're gonna show you guys one of the roots that we have for one of our monsteras and maybe even like break down the soil for a little bit. Melody's checking which one she wants to show. We'll show you this one. This is a Monstera Avo. I think I picked this one because it's really cute and compact. And if I tip it over, I hope not a lot of soil is gonna fall. Here we go. I hope, I didn't even check if this was rooted. I like to squeeze it a little bit here because sometimes the roots can be on the pot. And yeah. Oh. Wow. So all these are new little roots coming out of that. Oh man, that's so cute. Melody, this is a good one. Yay. See like this one here, sometimes um, these rot, but look, sometimes you can see new roots coming out of that too. So, and not that it's rotting, but maybe it's just like a little bit weaker and then it's gone. I've had a lot of experience with seeing them like not do so well, that the roots inside are still kind of pushing and they still push out new roots. Cool, it's a good one. Okay, so let's break down the soil that we have here. What's inside this soil? So it's mostly, it's all cocoa and perlite. All cocoa uh, chunks. 
And as you can see, it loves it. We get all this bright light in the morning right now because the sun is on winter time. We're not getting as much light, but we still have our grow lights here. And then that's what helps it with keeping the variegation. And then also these are super important that you want this to be strong. If you see that this is going black and dying, there's something going on with the plant itself. This is always a great time. When you see new roots coming out like this, you know that you're having a healthy plant. So we had a lot of, a lot of experience these past two years of like importing and just figuring out like what was wrong, what are we doing wrong? But now I feel like we're in our right place and we're able to propagate and we keep them, all of them alive but a lot of growing pains that we had and now we're at a good place and we know what to do. I'm gonna show you some right now that we have growing on the pole and you're gonna see how important it is and how much they love to be on the pole. Oh, I see. Oh, look at that. They're already attaching here. See? Mm -hmm. So with this being secure, look at this beautiful leaf here. Nice size too. So I feel like one of the most common questions about the variegation is how do you get it to get more variegated, more white? Because in a way you don't want it to get all white because right, this it's not here, healthy. This one well, is all white. This one is like, all oh, it's gonna be all white. Most likely it's gonna lose the leaf. So in that case, sometimes what people do is that we end up having to cut it down, at least where we could see like a lot more green. So for me, if I was to cut this, maybe I'll try to save this and hopefully see if it's gonna come out in green and somewhere green. But here, I like to cut it down maybe to here and you just, if you can zoom in here. Okay. That's like the new growth here. That's, if I was to cut it down, most likely it's gonna come out of here or somewhere where there's like a lot of, another little bub coming out. So this is what I like to see if I have to cut things down. I like to see this. Also, if I was to cut it down, I'm not gonna cut it down somewhere where I have it like too green. I wanna cut it down where like a good stable, like white and green. I'll cut it up to there and then that's where I can get the new leaves. Cause if I cut it all the way down and at the bottom there's only green, the monstera is only gonna come out. Green. Oh look, here's another all white leaf. Beautiful. Whoa! But won't survive. Yeah. <laughs> so then I guess another question, do you know anything about like the brown leaves? Like that's gonna happen. I just feel like that just happens. That just happens, but I know sometimes, I think you've had that too. It's like, if you don't touch it and you let it be, maybe it stays a little bit longer. Yes, that's but right. But eventually, like I think it kind of dies down. People say that we've been hearing that like if you have like the oils of your skin, and you touch it, it's kind of like, that's a no-no. So if you go to a greenhouse or a plant center and there's a white leaf or very, a very variegated leaf at all, don't touch it, okay? <laughs> because you want to make sure, like that's anything that kind of like touches that leaf, it's gonna maybe go brown. Yeah, because so. it's a, a lot more sensitive. It's not as strong. So this is like the perfect one. <laughs> nice variegation here. Also, you want to check out the stem. You see how the stem has like a nice variegation all the way around. Also, if you find yourself like seeing these area roots everywhere, sometimes we even just like to stick them back into the soil <laughs> and then they just like keep growing from there. I've also heard from a friend that uh, with Monstera, sometimes when they grow like really big and the roots are going crazy and they don't have anything to like lean on, their roots will create a stable environment. They'll find the ground somehow and so they can just keep growing up and up and up. So I'm gonna show you guys what we consider our high, varia high variegation plant. And I'm just picking, I haven't seen anything yet. But we do have them in a section, so they're all gonna be close together. So we see that the leaves are highly variegated and also the stem is variegated. So there's two things that we like to see here. The variegation on the leaves and the variegation on the stem. So this is what we consider a high variegation album. There you go. Looks like, like an oil painting or something. It does. So this is what I meant like with cutting it right here. Then you see the new leaf is coming out. All right, so Melody's showing me where the reverted elbows are. We put the reverted elbows here so they could get a little bit more sun. They're outside in the shade. So as you can see, some of these we've cut back, but now they're getting a little bit of the white. And even some that haven't been white for a long time, like this one here, 
it's already kind of getting white on the new leaf. So that's kind of been a little bit steady, oh, but with yeah. the new leaf, it's coming out. So we actually do sell reverted albos at our nursery, at our garden center. Oh, so cute. So it's like a little bit, it's not super white, but it's it's nicely and it's, it's it looks really healthy. It's green, a little bit of white and yeah. Melody's gonna be showing us our medium variegation now. So this is like a little bit more of the medium. It still has like nice variegation throughout. Uh, not so strong at the, with the stem, but still there. See, if I was to cut this down maybe at the bottom, I wouldn't probably have that much luck of getting more variegation. I would kind of have this still grow and maybe with more leaves coming out, the variegation would be more and more. So I can maybe cut it more from the top than, up, than cutting it all the way down to the bottom but still our medium is still very nicely, it's more even variegation. Where the other one, there was more variegation than green, but this is more even variegation. Wait a second, look at this anthurium. <laughs> this is so pretty. This is a dark block. Oh my God, so pretty. Nice. Okay, back to the Monstera. Another medium but still with nice variegation at the bottom. See, one side is really with variegation and the other side is a little bit more green. And even with time, see it started off with maybe when we put it in here, it probably had these right here. So that's where it looked like it had medium variegation. But now with it growing and there's getting more variegation, this can probably go to the higher variegation section. So with time, depending on how it grows, it can either go to the high or to the low. We try to do a little bit of everything. So that's what we try to do. Options. Options. We want you to have options. <laughs> Boots. <laughs> He's variegated too. <laughs> oh. So this is what it starts off being with low variegation. So the price is gonna be different and it's gonna be lower. You never know, it can also just form into being medium or high variegation too. But it's starting up as a low so that we sell it as a low. We try to make sure that when we send it out, it's still gonna give you a little bit of a white leaf or like a little bit more of a speckle. When we, that's what we try to focus on when we send it to you. This could be considered like low, low. Cause this has a little bit here. It's still kind of sprinkling in but not as strong. Low, low. Low, low, these are low, low. <laughs> they're still really pretty. Yeah, they're really pretty. Yeah, let's look at the stem, like so how yeah, green it is. The, you can see the stem is more green. And even if I was to cut this, I'm noticing this right here, if I was to cut it, it still wouldn't give me any variegation here because it has, uh, it's not really close to anything white. But maybe here, if I was to cut it, that way for it to grow a little bit more, if I was to cut it here, maybe I can get a little bit of that, that white here. That's what I'm guessing. Mm. So it's all before you cut it, check out the stem, see where it is, you know, because then you can see, oh, it could potentially be growing out of here. Yeah, it's like when you end up seeing these every single day for a year, you kind of realize how they start growing. So I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. This is really beautiful too. Oh, See, wow. even the green can be really nice. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Yeah, this is really pretty. <gasps> Look at that stem. Yeah. So it's all with like noticing the pattern of the stem, I think. Because here you can see that it has some really high variegation. But for some reason, the leaves are growing out from the front like this. And so it's getting more of the green than the white. Mm. But you never know if you were to cut it, depending on where, you could probably get some variegation here or from this new growth right here. There's some various points that this one has that if you were to cut it back, you could probably most likely get some variegation out of it. Look how cute this is. <laughs> I, see it, I see it every day I walk in here and I'm like, oh, cute. <laughs> Aww. And then this one. <gasps> Look at that. It's so big. Which one is this one, Melody? This is the Aurea. I'm guessing the large form one. <gasps> oh. M G. That is such a big leaf. <laughs> Look at that. 
And then this one right here? That's it, that's the same one. That's the same one? Oh my God, it is. So this is gonna harden off and look like this. So that's not the, that's not how it's gonna stay. It's really yellow. You can see from the back loop. Look at the yellow variegation in the back. See, look at this new leaf coming out. You know, if the new leaf is gonna come out, it's most likely gonna have this nice variegation, you see? Yeah. Thanks, Melody, for joining us with this Monstera Albo video. I actually learned a lot from you. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't even know myself. Okay, good. So I'm happy to share with you guys as well. Anything else, Melody? Yeah, I mean, uh, thank you for watching. And I hope I helped you guys. This is all just from like everyday experience. And yeah, I mean, I'm still learning every day, just like you. I'm not an expert. And yeah, and please, if you have any suggestions of what we should do next, let us know in the comments. Also, if you want more Hoya videos, annoy Paula so she can annoy Annoy me. Melody, yeah. So I can annoy me. I don't have time for that. <laughs> but you can annoy her. And then, yeah, you could do, well, I'm happy to do anything. Just, yeah, let us know. And yeah, maybe next time we'll do like a little bit more of a video about our soil mix that we have for outside plants versus the stuff that we have for inside plants. If you guys so, are interested in that, please comment down below. Yes. And All right, I'll see you later. All right, bye, bye Melody. Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs> and if you guys have any fun tips and tricks with Montserrat Albos, please comment down below and we could help each other out. And remember, we are always learning here at the greenhouse. All of this that we learned are basically all from observing. And what has worked for us in South Florida, in this climate, in this greenhouse. But if you guys have any tips and tricks for us too, we would be happy to learn about them. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are loving this plenty content, make sure you guys are subscribing, commenting, and liking. And I will see you guys in our next video. Bye. I'm gonna see if I could grab my elbow. This is my elbow, guys, mine. actually very hard um i guess it hasn't moved from that spot in a while so like the roots were actually in the ground i had to like yank it out this is it it's actually taller than me that's pretty crazy melody that was so hard to take out